All right. Open up for discussion. Brother Jody L. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot to even. You just reminded me of, of, of too many things I'm trying to write down. Uh, the beginning books of scripture from Genesis to past Kings Chronicles is extremely important to understand <coughs> the other prophets. Most of these prophets is revealed or seen in Kings and Chronicles and uh, Samuel as well. Samuel is definitely a part is a, a part of the Kings um, man. I was just writing down so many things. I, I don't know where. So I'm gonna start with the 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 man. <laughs> I don't know where to start. All right. So David's understanding of the prophecy of his son ruling. Right. I wanna I wanna read from Samuel because I when we correlate Kings, is it Kings, Chronicles, and Samuel? when it talks about David and Solomon, it's very important. And even Solomon understood many of these things pertaining to the one to come. <clears throat> so check, check this out. Second Samuel chapter seven, right? So I went back to check on these verses and, and the words that they say show clearly that they understand this is not talking about Solomon. David understood. Now watch this. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse starting from verse 12. Nathan comes to him and he says, When your days be fulfilled, meaning like when you die, you shall sleep with your fathers, and I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father he shall be my son and uh, <laughs> sorry if he commits iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men but my mercy shall not depart from him as i took it from saul whom i put away before you and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you your throne shall be established forever According to the words, according to the vision, all the vision, so did Dan, uh, Nathan speak unto David. Now watch this. Then went in David and sat before Yahuwah, and he said, Who am I, Master Elohim? What is my house that you have brought me here? This was yet a small thing in your sight, O Yahuwah. But you have spoken also of your servant's house, for a great while to come. For a great while to come. He, he knew this wasn't like an immediate thing that was going to happen. He knew this was going to happen in a great while. Now watch this. And in this manner of man, O Master Yahuwah, what can David say more unto you? you for you, Master Yahuwah, know your servant. For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, have you done all these things to make your servant know them. Wherefore, you are great, O Yahuwah Elohim, for there is none like you. Neither is there any Elohim besides you, according to all that we have heard in, with our ears. Then it says, then it goes, because he's, he's, he's grateful for what is about to happen through him, right? And then he says here in verse 25, he says, and now, O Yahuwah Elohim, the word of, that you have spoken concerning your servant, concerning his house, establish it forever, as do you has said, right? Then he says, and let your name be magnified forever. Um, Yahuwah of hosts is the Elohim over Israel, and let the house of your servant David be established before you. And then he says in verse 29, in verse 29 of 2 Samuel 7, he says, Therefore now let it 
please you to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever before you. He just said, I was going to establish your son's kingdom forever, right? He says, this is a small thing for you to be able to establish this person's kingdom forever. Then he says in verse 29, now, now, bless my, bless my immediate family, bless my immediate line forever. He already established saying that he would establish this son that will come through David. And he's saying that will happen a while to come. And thank you for all those things that you've done and bless your name because you are the, the true Elohim. And then he says, so now bless my immediate family forever before you. So he understood that one was a while to come and it was not Solomon but then he's saying, bless my, my actual line that's coming directly after me as well. You see, um, it says, for you, Master Elohim, have spoken it. And with your blessings, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. So he's saying, you will bless my house through this one that you're going to send, but also bless my house directly, you know, as you have promised it. So. This is, <clears throat> this is only one aspect of the statements from David that understood this is what you connect with the books of Psalms, the writings, you know, so that way you could understand that he was writing the book of Psalms in the emphasis of the established kingdom that was, gonna, that was prophesied to him, in the emphasis of the one to come. You know, he was he was looking forward to that. He was emphasizing on that coming, which is why many of his writings actually pertain to Messiah, which is why when Messiah came, he said, David spoke about me, you know, um, and when they went through the scriptures, he said they went through the Torah, the prophets and David to see all those things that pertain to me. So David understood these things. And this is where the emphasis of the branch comes in, because now the branch was was mentioned here now. Look at look at look at what the branch mean, and I think that because of the word branch, we lose sight of of what it was supposed to emphasize. But, <laughs> but Rod, did you want to say something first before I point out what you what uh, what you mentioned about the branch? Nah, not at all. You go ahead, brother. Okay, so so we see that David understood this, and this is why the branch that's coming through David is still prophesied after Solomon. So you see, if you notice the wording, the branch that was supposed to come through the line of David is still talked about after Solomon died. You see what I'm saying? Now, what is the branch? Why is that word branch significant? Because the word branch literally only is referencing to a son. That's what the word branch is used throughout scripture. Um, I'm going to point out a few verses uh, Genesis 49, 22, talking about Joseph's line through Ephraim, how Ephraim was going to multiply in seed. And he says, Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over, run over the well. So the word branches is emphasizing on children. Jeremiah chapter 16, uh, chapter 11, verse 16, it says, and Yahuwah called your name, a green olive tree, beautiful and goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he have kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. This also brings us to Romans 9, where it talks about the branches being cut off. But that's just another, that's just another future um, uh, application to the branches being the children of the tree. The tree being uh, Israel and the branches being the children from from the tree. Uh, Daniel chapter eleven says the same thing in a prophetic sense pertaining to um, uh, the king of the, the king of the south and the king of the north, and it says here in verse six, in verse six and seven of Daniel eleven, which is a pro another prophecy of the Roman the Roman Empire. It says at the end of years shall shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement, but she shall not retain the power of the army, neither shall she stand he stand nor his army, but she shall be given up 
and they that brought her and he that beget her and he that strengthened her in these times. But out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate. The branch out of her roots is talking about a child from her loins, a child from her loins. So I think a lot of times we lose sight of the term branch and we don't apply it to a son. This is why they knew, this is why they knew that he was referred to as the son of Elohim in the book of Daniel when he when he popped up in the fiery furnace with the three Hebrews. They were like, oh, he looks like the son of Elohim because they already knew that branch meant son. Now, Isaiah 4 clearly says the branch of Yahuwah in Isaiah 4 verse 2, it says, in that day shall the branch of Yahuwah be beautiful and glorious. That's why it doesn't always call it the branch of David. Sometimes it says the branch to emphasize that it's not the branch of David. It's coming through David's line, but it's the branch of Yahuwah. It's the son of Yahuwah that's coming through the line of David. You know, but we're so caught up with the word branch that we don't realize that it's emphasizing on the idea of a son, of an offspring. So the offspring of Yahuwah being beautiful and glorious, the fruit of the earth shall, shall be excellent, calmly, them, uh, them, <coughs> them that are escaped of Israel, and shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and remain in Jerusalem shall be called set apart, and everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. And listen to the message that he's going to give. When the, when the master shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the Ruach of judgment and by the Ruach of burning. Remember, he says that he will come and he will baptize you with water and with fire. Verse 5, it says, And Yahuwah will create upon every dwelling place in Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud smoke by day and a shining a flame of fire by night. Who was... Who was, who was that to the Israelites, which will now be that to every dwelling, every house of believers? Every household of believers will have the smoke by day and the flame by night with them, with them. But this is what the branch is supposed to emphasize on, the branch that was going to come from Yahuwah, the one that he is going to bring through the line of David. Um. Man, so when you start from Isaiah 4 and then you continuously go through Isaiah 7, like what Brother Rod did in Isaiah uh, 8 and 9, to see these extra prophetic um, implications of a son coming, it's supposed to all, you're supposed to have already understood that from chapter 4. So when you get to chapter 7, <coughs> you already know who is going to, who is going to bring about this cleansing, who is about to bring about this, this, uh, this 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 transformation, this reformation, you know, the idea that it's Hezekiah, you it, you have to you have you have to have not found out about Hezekiah the rest of his life, because it says that he was going to bring peace to in Isaiah chapter nine. It says he was going to bring peace. Let's look at Isaiah chapter nine because you, you brought that up too. I don't. I, I'm gonna stop right after this one because it's. <laughs> It's just so many. It's like, so in Isaiah chapter nine, um, uh, verse seven, right? It says, of the increase of his government, peace shall there be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom and, and to order it, they go to the throne of David again and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth. Henceforth means from this point on and forever. The zeal of Yahuwah of hosts will perform this. Do you know what Hezekiah did? Hezekiah was, he was, a, I'm not going to de deny he was a great king, and he did a lot of great things, but he did not bring peace to the, the throne of David. Isaiah chapter 39. Look at what happened in Isaiah chapter 39. These dudes from Babylon came to check him out. So now we're going to recognize why, why we ended up in Babylonian captivity. Well, it was because of Brother Hezekiah. So in Isaiah chapter 39, verse 3, it says, Then came Isaiah the prophet, and he said to King Hezekiah and said to him, 
what did these men say from whence they came? And Hezekiah said, oh, they, they came from a far country, even from Babylon. Verse four, then said he, what have they seen in your house? This is Isaiah 39, verse four. Hezekiah answered and said, all that is mine, all in my house they have seen. And there is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, hear the word of Yahuwah. Behold, the days come that all that is in your house and that which your fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith Yahuwah. And your sons, which is what's supposed to be on the throne, your sons shall issue that shall issue from you, which you shall beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. You know what that means? That means that they won't have any sons anymore. They won't have any sons anymore. Therefore, Hezekiah cannot fulfill that because there is no one. There's going to be an end to the his line to sit on the throne. So Hezekiah's line is about to end because they're going to become eunuchs in Babylon. Then Hezekiah to, uh, then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, good is the word of Yahuwah, which have spoken. And he said, moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. So when Hezekiah lived, he repented. And Yah said, it won't happen to you, but it will happen to your sons. You will have to go to Chronicles and the book of Kings to see that whole conversation. You know, the whole conversation of you should have showed these kings the temple, the way Solomon did to the queen of the south. He was supposed to magnify Yahuwah, not his own treasures. Because he magnified his own treasures, Babylon took them away. And peace no longer reigned in his throne. From It says in, in Isaiah 9, from this point on and forever. So <clears throat> you would have to redefine the word henceforth. And for, you know, and even if you say forever is an undetermined time, it said from this point on. And when Hezekiah had peace, when he died, that was it. That was the end of that peace because Yah promised it to him because of his repentance, not because of, of him doing some uh, heavy duty fighting against the Assyrians, but because he repented from his wicked ways, he found peace, but his children did not find peace. And it was because of his actions. But go ahead, Brother Rod. Yeah, and it's also interesting to note because it's also mentioned that because he says uh, Emmanuel in the Hezekiah pa passage, yeah, Elohim is with us. It's not, he's not speaking to Hezekiah. He's saying, I'm with you as a nation. Right? Right. <laughs> and then just to just to ta ta tackle what Jadiel just mentioned in Isaiah 39, the mirror to that passage is uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, uh, where, where it shows how basically he entices Babylon by showing them everything that they own. They basically were like, I'm coming to get that. That's what happened. He, he right, gave right. up the city uh, to the Babylonians. So um, great point, brother. Uh, you had more? <coughs> yeah, no, it's... It's just, it's just super clear the emphasis and the constant efforts, emphasis from the beginning of the book of Isaiah all the way through that, that he's promising in, uh, a son that's coming from Yahuwah, the, the branch of Yahuwah, to come through this, the, the bowels of David, to enter into the line of David. Um, and then, you, you know, you continuously see this. So you have the, this is during the Assyrian Empire. Then you have the Babylonian Empire being prophesied. Zechariah, you mentioned Zechariah, which he prophesied that during the Persian Empire, during the King Darius. So you have throughout Assyria, then you have Babylon, then you have Persia, and they're still talking about this branch that was supposed to come. So many people who do away with the New Testament are emphasizing that this branch has already either occurred during the time of the Assyrians because he mentioned the Assyrians. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that scripture teaches is that uh, uh, Galatians chapter four teaches us that everyone that's born of the flesh will persecute those who are born of the spirit. You can apply every single nation that went against Israel 
and you can reapply it to the same spirit of the enemy that attacks Yah's people. We have the spirit of Babylon that we're still talking about now. We have the spirit of, of the Assyrians. We have the spirit of Egypt that still that we're still talking about now. All the empires that went against Yah, we can reapply that mentality is still going against Yah's people today. You see what I'm saying? Even their belief system is still trinkling over even to where us now we're look at we just passed christmas that's a, every nation worship the sun god on this winter solstice including the assyrians the assyrians the babylonians the egyptians and we just had to pass this season of of this whole world celebrating an assyrian babylonian um belief celebration so the idea that the assyrians are like gone and that's it. No, whatever is in their mind is still here, just like the Greeks and the Romans and, and the Persians. It's all still here. It's embedded in the system that we call the world. We say the world. That encompasses all these empires and all these pagan beliefs and these wicked things that go against the people of Yah. So when we are so caught up in what we're looking at like somebody had a sword he killed this other guy with a sword and you're not looking at um what's motivating this man to kill that same motivation is going to be here in our day as well what's motivate what's motivating this persecution of yas people that's going to still be here today you know and and here's just you know i'm just throwing this in there many because of this fact and the need to erase this fact that that's the spirit of the, the what's motivating these empires at that time is still motivating the empires at this time. The reason why people are trying to do away with that, um, when they do away with the New Testament, they also try to do away with um, Hasatan. Hasatan now becomes just people, people that's uh, adversary towards you, <clears throat> instead of Hasatan being an actual spirit that's that's motivating wickedness throughout throughout the world throughout the generations is now not and now he has to become some type of literal thing as well you know like everybody oh lucifer is the king of tyree that's it like that's all it is like no you're not understanding who's behind this king who, who made this in the inspiration of all this wickedness we have this uh, uh, information in genesis you know, the idea is even projecting itself to say that Hasatan wasn't in the serpent, that it was the actual animal serpent that was doing it. It was not any spirit behind a serpent. It was the actual, just a serpent. Like, a, <laughs> is the, the scriptures is too amazing. I'm just amazed that at the history and how he could, how he is in control of how history is directed and how he exposes history so that way we can clearly see his handiwork and man's handiwork uh, distinctly you know we could clearly see it you know and that, i'm a i'm a i'm a step back for a while praise you Shia, brother nah i hear you man you know it's you know these things are unveiled you know specifically i like what you said about history because particularly when it came came to making sure that um the prophecy is fulfilled in Messiah, it was vital to, to 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 make sure that the information about the two kings was 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 understood and clearly seen, because it has to match what is being said. And I think, you know, all the things that you just said, the 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 history of the nation, you know, the the understanding that the people would have when when Isaiah s said. To Ahaz, you know, okay, you don't you, you don't want to hear it, you don't want to tempt, yeah, okay. Well, let me open this up so that the whole house of David understands, makes a pointed conversation to understanding why the prophecy was what it was. Um, so very important, very important. Brother Rick, and then uh JP. Man, brother, you laid out a good one there. You uh, opened up my eyes to a few things that I hadn't even looked at. Uh, the kings, you know, the two king confirmation, that's that's pretty vital, I would say. You know, I mean, uh, how we to look at the scripture and to, to understand it and prophecies and 
you know, you, you really broke down that very well. I have to give you some, some accolades there. That was good. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what, what brother Johnny L just said, I mean, I don't know how much deeper we can go. I mean, th this is, this is pretty, pretty amazing. You know, the, the, the clarity and the depth of what's been revealed over the last few weeks has been amazing just in this topic that, <clears throat> you know, we seem to be honing in on very, very precisely. And we're really seeing way more than just what we were starting to look at. You know, we're seeing how all of this plays throughout history in such a, an immaculate way. You know, we see the precision and we see the, the intellect that, that Yahuwah used is way beyond our capacity to understand or comprehend. How did he do all this? You know, and he did it so that we could believe. So that we, when we really do look and see and study these things, all the all the light bulbs go off, and it's a it's all good. It's all a go. It's all confirmation. It's positive. It's 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 foundational. You strip away this, your foundation, your amuna is, is destroyed, in my opinion. You know, so being able to have this confirmed and restored like this. Uh, really, uh, I think is going to do a lot of benefit to those that are watching these videos and listening to these teachings and seeing prophecy laid out before you and see how it's fulfilled and how it, how it really speaks to us in so many different ways. It's powerful. It's very, very powerful. And I agree with you, Brother Jadiel. It's amazing. Scripture is truly amazing when you get into it and you really see it. I mean, just, just getting a bird's eye view like most people do, or they stay focused in one area of the book all their lives. Man, when you get digging into this thing and it starts unfolding the truth to you, that excites you, man. That really gets you excited because you now see, hey, all these confirmations, it only takes, what, two, three to confirm any matter? We got a whole bunch of them. We got a whole bunch of confirmations. And if we got to turn away all of those confirmations and try to discredit them all, then I say shame on whoever that is is doing that. You blinded. Because there's just way too much. Just way too much. I, all I got to say, job well done, guys. Uh, all Everybody has said what they said today has just been really enlightening. So, bravo. Thank you, brother. You know, it's you because you mentioned how, um, you know, these, these teachings come in and the, the weight of what they're saying we see is weightless because, you know, in the passage we read earlier, Second Timothy, Paul says uh, in chapter four, verses three, he says, for, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their desires, because they have itching ears, they, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from truth and be turned aside to fables. So when we break down scripture and when we expose what they're trying to say, what they're trying to point to scriptures to say, then their stories, their, their doctrine, you know, their direction becomes fables, man. Becomes fables. So praise Yah. Um, well, you know what it says that the truth will be will expose the lies, you know? Absolutely. And when you go searching for the truth and you dig in it and you present the truth and, and it speaks for itself, it's real hard to deny that. It's real hard to argue that, you know, that argument's dead at arrival, you know, it, it has no weight. So raise your Go ahead, brother Jadiel. I'm out of the way. I thought he said he was going to be quiet though, didn't he? <laughs> no, he can't be. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'm going to wait till after JP. If he, if he, if he's quiet for the rest of the thing, that would be amazing. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, hallelujah. Um, I, I was just really impressed with your the way you presented the um the, the breakdown, you know, slowly and and real thoughtfully because it was I've never I've never done it that way, you know. And a lot of times, like Brother Rick, you know, I was in that same mindset, like, wow, like you you went past that place you know because normally what we see is people stop in isaiah 7 and they read that and they're like that's it but then as you went further 
you really reveal that, hey, there's more to the prophecy than just Emmanuel. There's more to this prophecy. And then and then the breakdown you did was really it was really great for understanding. Um, I got to go back because it was just like some of it was over my head, to be honest. I was like, man, I don't hold on. Like, you know, because it's so deep. It was so deep. <laughs> Hey, did you learn some new words today? <laughs> I was like, and, and, well, but, you know, and then I also appreciated the, um, you know, because there is that conversation of virgin and, and maiden. And what is that? How did you? And it really goes to show how the New Testament or you would say even the Septuagint, how you can use both of that Greek and the Hebrew to try to figure out, you know, what does it mean? How this word that word played out? Um, but the one point that I, I thought was was great when uh, you had spoke about um, Isaiah was it I wrote it down Isaiah eight four and spoke about before the child can speak and say mother and father and you said you know this is about this age two years old you know and then we go and then when when you read Matthew he you know and I don't know if this is correct about it but to me I was like whoa. So Harad goes, I mean, scripture says that um, in Matthew 2, 16, and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and young under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. So it kind of showed to me in Matthew another reasoning why Harad said, because I, to me, I was seeing it from that standpoint of your what you have brought out that. Yes, we see it, you know, even in my note here in this Bible, they're speaking about because, you know, there he kind of gauged the time frame of age for this Messiah. But I looked at it from the perspective that you that we see in, in Isaiah that before the child can even speak. So it looked like prophetically to me, even Harad was fulfilling this prophecy within not even probably knowing it. But like, I'm going to, you know, before a child can speak in that way so it was kind of interesting that was something i never looked at it from that standpoint um but i do appreciate that you went further into chapter eight to show that there's even more to that prophecy than just isaiah 7 so praise you uh yahuwah for for bringing this to your attention and, and really guiding you to break it down that way because that that's some that's some work my brother that you hey, let me tell you there. something let me tell beautiful. you something. It, it, it wasn't <laughs> me. June, June will tell you. It wasn't me. I'm telling you, I was struggling. At one point, I was just like, well, wait a minute. How can I show this? You know, and when I, like you said, when I slowed down and I looked at what happens in the early part of seven, and I saw how he, he wasn't just speaking to Ahaz at that point. He was speaking to the whole house of David. And watch this. When he says to Isaiah, I'm going to tell you, so you brought out the fact of the two years old, right? Because there's two, remember, there was two kings. We don't know how much longer after um, Herod was dead before his second son was taken out, right? So that could stretch it a little bit. That could bring him Messiah up to maybe eight, nine, or ten, right? Let me show you. So, and this is something I didn't discuss in the passage because it just... I, it was just too many scriptures going through my mind. But listen to what he says in chapter 7, verse 16. He says, um, he says, uh, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. Now, this this is different from what happens in what it says in chapter eight. This says before the child can uh, refuse or know evil from good, which means the time of bar mitzvah, 13 years old, when the child is, is, is knows right and understanding, which would fit in what happened with Messiah, right? This also fits what happens in chapter eight. So this is why when I look at you know, verse verse 13, where he says, then I said, here, O house of Israel, I saw the split. I'm going to give the whole house of Israel a sign. 
but Ahaz, you ignored me. I'm still going to give you a sign. That's why we see it separate, but still entails what's said in 14, 714. It still fits the, the first prophecy. So we can see that the Messiah fits, and we see clearly because right after Meyer Shallah Hasbach, that's the name you were talking about, Rick. <laughs> right after he said, and I practice these names, it says that before he can say mother or father, which brings the age down to two. And it's clarified because two years later, in, 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 in 7, 722 BC, we see Damascus and Samaria fall to the Syrians. So that's important. And that's missed. And that's why all this fake crap comes out because they're trying to pin a, a needle on a table with their eyes closed in a dark room. They can't do it. They're not, they're missing it. They're not seeing the line from Genesis up to this point. Hebrews knew what he was saying to them. They, when he said the house of David, they knew what that meant. They knew that it meant the branch. They knew that it meant the seed. You know, they knew that it was something specific and something greater that he was talking about. But yet, I'm still going to fulfill it in the present time that you're in that addresses the problems that you have. And, 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 and will future. So praise you. Jody. As a sign. Yeah. As a time. sign. He's going to fulfill it at the moment as a sign to remind them of what's going to come again. You see that. And that's what people are, are missing that it's not just what comes out of a prophet's mouth. That's a sign or that's a prophecy. It's what's done in history is also a sign and a prophecy as well. Events reoccur. Events happen to show what will happen again. When they went into captivity, he said, if you, because of the sin, because of your rebellion, because of your iniquity, you will go into captivity. He said that before. Then they came out. Then they went back in. Then they came out. Guess what's reapplying? The prophetic event. If you fit the if you fit the um, the criteria of this event or this prophecy, it's going to happen again. So when we look back and we see the wickedness and the kingdoms and all these things, yeah, we can see. We can now see. We can look at the wickedness happening and we can see this is going to happen again. Oppression is going to come again. Persecution is going to come again. Captivity is going to come again. You see what I'm saying? So. We have to we have to see and it's not like a it's not like a difficult thing. Children learn the this way. Like they learn from events, you know, they can like my my you have if you have two kids, one will probably learn by touching the fire. And they'll be like, I don't want to touch the fire. And another one will learn by I don't want to touch the fire like he did and end up like him. You see? But then it's like what happens? Uh, I'm, I'm playing around with the fire. Guess what? I'm going to get burned with the fire because I, I ignored what I knew was going to happen. So now it happened again to me. It's fulfilled. It's fulfilled with me now. So <coughs> we have to, we have to kind of be, this is real life. <laughs> this, is just, this is real life stuff that, that Yahuwah has put in, into the into the nature of things into the nature of time like it's going to reapply if we fit the circumstance if we are sinful then we will feel his wrath just like others felt the wrath if we are disobedient the consequences will occur because that's where the consequences is in it's in the sin it's in the rebellion it's in the persecution you know so so we, you know, it's so many things that this connects to, that this brings light to, uh, not just prophecy, but just life in general, life in general, walking with Yah, the blessings will come to you. It doesn't matter how things look, how grim things look at the moment. He put it in order already. He put the blessings will come if you give your heart to him and a walk in obedience. He gave you the, the, what is it? The blueprint. Here we go. The blueprint. You see? So so if he gave us the blueprint, it's going to, the result will end up the same. They got the land because of their obedience. Guess what? We will receive our inheritance because of obedience, because of faith, 
belief in obedience. They did not receive it. Hebrews chapter three tells us why, because of unbelief. And then it says, let us not fall unto the same unbelief. Just because we're in a different time doesn't mean it's not the same. It's the same unbelief, the same punishments that they went through. You see, and the blessings that they receive, we receive the same blessings of Abraham. You know, so uh, yeah. Before I before I go, I wanna I'm gonna let um, Sister Diane go. What kinds of gentlemen going on in here today? Shalom, shalom, Miss Parker. I tell you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, absolutely. Wow. My heart is racing. I kind of feel like uh, Brother Jadiel there. I, I just don't know which way to let this out. <clears throat> I feel the spirit so strongly. Just don't want to burst out at one time. Um, I'm going to try to put some water to this. <clears throat> wow. Um, th this entire day, you know, this has really been uh, the fullness of Yahuwah here starting out uh, with Brother Rick speaking of prophecy and actually pretty much ending or, or prophecy being a, a big part of even the discussion now. Um, this is truly, truly the fullness of Yahuwah right here. Um, you know, I love it. And I don't even think Brother Rod knew or was aware that um, his teaching was going to tie in so closely. Um, uh, to Brother Rick's teaching in terms of prophecy, even though prophecy was one of the aspects of learning how to uh, study the Bible. But in, in his, um, in, in Brother Rod's topic of how to study the Bible, you know, he mentions the what, the when and the where. I think there was another one he added in there. Um, and I don't know uh, if he said who or why, because it's been, <laughs> been an hour now since the teaching began. But um, as um, he was talking, you know, this also explains the why, you know, why, you know, we, we study scripture and um, we, we study scripture um, so that we can learn all about who, you know, he is, who Yahuwah is, who our Heavenly Father is. And um, we, you know, a lot of times we look at it, some people may look at it to see what Genesis says or what Revelation says or what Luke says or what Jeremiah says or whatever. But, you know, why do we study it? We study it so that we can learn all about our Yahuwah. We can learn all about um, our father. We can learn all about his son. So we can learn all about who the Ruach HaKodesh is, you know, what all this um, means to this. And this includes the understanding of his wisdom. You know, he wants us to be wise. He wants us to know these things. You know, this is why. You know, the, the question went out as, um, why does he give us prophecy? Well, we learn why he gives us prophecy as we learn why we study his word. As we learn why we study scripture, we learn why he gives us prophecy. We learn why he gives us the epistles. We learn why he gives us um um, um the, the 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 Tanakh we learn why he gives us the Torah we learn why he gives us um uh the Brit Hadashah so when we get that why now why do we study this why do we do these things this is all about learning about him and learning who he is and this is why we are told to study the scriptures that a workman rightly dividing the word of Yahuwah need not be ashamed. And really, when you look up that word ashamed, one of the adjectives to that word is distressed. You know, we become distressed when we don't know him. We do not seek to learn him. We could be distressed and don't even know that we're distressed. But once we come into him, and we, and we face him, I guess, take our face away from the wall and turn towards him. We learn just how distressed we really were, how ignorant 
you know, we really were and really are regarding these things. And this is when we began to study. And if we look at this as a totality and not as parts, you know, we look at this not as the Old Testament and the New Testament, but look at it as the total word of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, then all of this explains the why. And it came out, it came out today because we started out with prophecy and all of us learned something that we had not understood before. You know, we learned something from a different perspective. And as they say, lo and behold, Brother Rod comes in with this study. And like I say, Brother Rod, I don't know if you knew that your ask, your prophecy aspect of what you presented to us and how to study the Bible would tie in so much to what uh, Brother Briggs did. But see, this is how the Royal Hakadesh works, you know. And I don't know about anyone else, but I'm full. And uh, Brother Jadiel, bless you, my brother. You got me going over here. I think you have a lot of us going. You even have yourself going, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, this is great and this is beautiful. So that's my two cents worth um, as to uh, why. If, if, you know, if, if I received anything else from this lesson and, and I do have some Bible study um, credits under my belt, then this here, uh, this why, this is it. You know, uh, we do, we look at the history, we look at the when, we look at the where, we look at, you know, the purpose or whatever, but why, why do we study? You know, or we can say, how do we study the Bible? We're gonna say, well, why do we study the Bible? And this is it right here. All praise be to Yahuwah and his son, Yahshua HaMashiach. Booyah. Praise Yah. Thank you, sis. No, I mean, absolutely right, you know, um, that that last one I threw in was the how, and I was I was directly referring to Genesis one one, because Yahuwah tells us that He created the earth, but we don't know how He created it. He doesn't He doesn't He doesn't tell us that it was Yahushua until we find that out later, you know. Um, so when we look at Scripture from a holistic view it's much easier to understand because as as all the brothers have been talking about, it's a thread from Genesis to Revelation, it doesn't stop. Starts in Genesis, ends in Revelation, and it's all pointing to the Hushu. So, man, praise you Anyone else? Yeah, I wanna take a look right back at nine, Isaiah 9-6 nine, real quick, if we could. Because sure. I think that's a, a, a very important one, and I, I don't think that it's translated properly, to be honest with you. But here, here's it for, a child is born unto us, a son is given unto us, and will be the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called his name or the name a wonderful counselor. This is L, of course, uh, but we get into this. These these final words are important here. Gibor, strong or mighty. So you know, strong and mighty. This is the one that got me when I looked at this. Odd. Perpetuity. Uh, uh, then we look in here, eternity, everlasting, old. Uh, so we can look and see without end. I don't see in there anywhere where it's talking about it, Father. So I think that that's been added in there with that. But it, we can see the mighty, everlasting, the mighty, eternal. You know, we see him in the beginning and the end, the beginning of the Aleph and the Tab, you know. Uh, and then this here's another word, this shar, where it's uh, translated as prince. But look what it says, uh, chief or ruler, official or captain. That's, that's some powerful words that kind of stimulate something more than just a prince. You know, he's a warrior. He's a captain. He's a chief captain. He's a general, you know, the keeper, the taskmaster. This is what they're talking about. And then this final one, we always think of it as peace. But look what it says, completeness, soundness, also welfare. And the strong says the same thing, well, favor, a friend, great, good, health. This is what, he, this is what he's bringing to the table more than just the shalom. Um, I just wanted to point that out because I find that that really shows a whole other aspect that, that is there about him and who he is that is mistranslated in that, you know. 
but it takes you to a deeper level that we know how much you have to be. So I just wanted to share that because I, when you brought up that, that scripture, uh, those things start out. So I wanted to kind of bring that clarity so you could see it a little bit differently. But uh, I just wanted to share that. I see you got a couple other hands, so I'll step back. Yeah, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, Tyrone, then um, Danny, then Jadio. Thank you, brother. I greatly appreciate this, uh, this, this teaching and everything. I'm glad I stayed around and put other things aside because this is something personally that I have been wanting to, to dig into as to how, you know, to go through the scriptures and how to study these things. And it brings out the things that we've talked about earlier about the prophecies and so forth. We need to be able to discern these things. And this is how we do it. And when we get the proper context of things, we started developing the foundation of what we need to continue in this and so forth. And as we do these things, we will grow, like the Father tells us, as we draw close to Him. How are we going to draw close to Him unless we're reading and studying His Word? And that's why I hate telling people, hey, if you love the Father like you say, then how often do you read His Word? How, how, how much do you understand His Word? You know, and I always tell my wife, I said, like you were saying early, how, what, when, where, and why. So if you don't understand these aspects, we lose a lot of the meaning. And as you break down these tools and things that we use, the Strong's Concordance stuff, it gives us even more enlightenment. And I never used that before until coming into studying with your brethren and everything and, and others. And I'm so appreciative that I stayed around to see this because I'm going to go back like Brother JP said, there was so much today and brother rick's teaching and what you taught brother rod it just brings it all together like sister diane said you just whoo you know <laughs> it's, it's a blessed day that's all i can say it's a blessed day and i'm glad for all this thank you great job brother i appreciate it i mean i you know like i said all glory goes to him um there were days and like i said my wife will tell you where i just i couldn't see a particular thing and i had i had to pray like Show me. I, I have to be able to, you know, communicate this. I don't see something here. Show me what I'm missing, you know, and he he shows up every time, brother. So, you know, we definitely depend on him. And it's interesting you say tools because part of what um what what I want to do, and, and this is actually a, a suggestion of my wife, is to share some of the tools that I use when I'm studying some of the books some of the websites, you know, um, but also teach how to use the commentaries as a, as a last resort to confirm what you found in your own study. Because if you don't, you'll be directed by what they're saying. It's not based on scripture, but based on their thoughts and what they think and what they assume. No, confirm it by the commentaries. That's, that's another aspect of studying. So I want to I want to put something together to share as far as that's concerned as well. Uh, thank you, brother. Brother uh, Danny and then Jadiel and then June. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Shabbat shalom. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I really, I really appreciate uh, what has been presented here by Sir Rick a while ago, Brother Rick, and then now Brother Rod and the the comment and the the additional comments and and uh, uh, word from Brother Jariel and JP and the rest, I really appreciate. Uh, for me, my time frame uh, compared to your time is really a bit sacrificed on my part, uh, but uh, it's really worth it. It's really worth it. Uh, there's so much that I got from our conversation, our, I mean, from the sharing in this, in this Zoom, uh, in this assembly. Uh, there is so much blessing that I, I received here uh, than reading it alone myself, but uh, hearing from you and listening to what the Ruach is really working. Let me just encourage you uh, that this assembly is really something very special uh, in the book of Tehelem or Psalm 25. Let me read 
three verses here in Psalm 25 to encourage us and to reveal why there is so much, there is so much the unfolding of the blessings of Yahuwah in our midst. Uh, Psalm 25 verse 12 says, Who then is the man that reveres Yahuwah? He teaches him in the way he should choose. His life dwells in good. And his seed inherits the earth. Verse 14 says, The secret of Yahuwah is with those who he revere him, and he makes his covenant known to them. I think the bottom line why there is so much abundance of spiritual nourishment and blessing here in this assembly is because Yahuwah knows our heart. He, we really long for him. We really revere him. We really fear for him. We really desire for him. And as a result, Yahuwah revealed himself, uh, make himself known, and he teaches us a lot of things here. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise Yah, Brother Danny. Um, I appreciate the encouragement. I'm sure the other brothers do too as well. You know, we definitely, you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, we understand the responsibility. Um, you know, Sister Diane, you, you asked, did I know what Brother Rick was going to share? I did not. I did not know what he was going to share. I knew that he was going to be speaking on prophecy because it was a second um, part of what he taught last week. However, we as a group uh, between Jody L, Rick, and myself have focused on equipping the saints. You know, we you know we teach verse by verse through the scriptures. We're going from cover to cover. Specifically, we have, you know, that's where you know I'm doing verse by verse usually. Rick does the topical messages where he takes apart different topics so that we can understand what they mean. Jadiel as well does verse by verse, but he also does the question and answer period. We have to be not only prepared to ourselves, we have to teach our flock how to understand what scripture is saying and study for themselves because the wolves are coming, man. They're coming. They're coming with reckless abandon. They're not joking. The enemy is trying to cut your head off, you know, and it comes in subtly. It comes in as a friend with a smile. It comes in as a costume, but it's trying to take you out. So we have to be ready for that. And, you know, we we join together in prayer and, and praying that we're continually directed and that we don't get caught up in any foolishness, you know, um, we, 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 we are your humble servants without question. And, you know, we appreciate, you know, brothers like you um, coming in fresh, excited. You know, you, you, you got something too, brother. You know, Yah has something special for you. You're doing a mighty work out there in, in the Philippines, man. So I want to encourage you as well. And, and, and I'm glad to have you, you know, as part of our fellowship. And I speak for all the elders as well, as well as our mighty. Mighty, mighty deacon, JP. <laughs> Praise Yah. Uh, Jadiel, um, then June. Oh, okay. Um, one, uh, there's another point that I wanted to make with the branch that was mentioned in Isaiah. Um, we about to have a slumber party right now in, in the scriptures, so. Nobody go nowhere. All right. So in, uh, <laughs> as you mentioned in Zechariah 6, which is during the, this prophetic time is during the, <laughs> during the time of uh, the Persian Empire. They were still in Babylon, but it was not ruled by Babylon. It was ruled by me, the Medes and the Persians. You know, so um, this was being prophesied about the branch and what the branch was supposed to do because we just read in uh chronicles brother red rod read in chronicles and and we just read in samuel about the building of the temple by the son that was supposed to come through david and david knew that this was supposed to come away a while it was going to be a while to come so now we have the persian empire we're still talking about this branch building this temple um but we know that when messiah came the temple was already there <laughs> also. So it's very important to understand that aspect of the son, the promised son that was supposed to come as well. So in Zechariah 6, he tells us in um, 
starting from verse 12, it says, and speak unto him saying, thus speaketh Yahuwah of hosts saying, behold the man whose name is the branch and he shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. Even he shall build the temple of Yahuwah and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. He, there's this idea that he's a Josedek or Yahusedek, um, the son of uh, Joshua, the priest from, from Persia, which is foolish to think that he would be ruling on the throne as a Levite, which was against uh, prophecy from Jacob from when Jacob prophesied that the scepter would never depart out of the tribe of Judah. But anyway, it says that this, this man, the branch, will sit and rule on the throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. So he will be a king and a priest, Melchizedek. You see? And the council of peace shall be between them both. Them both, he's referring to Yahuwah and the branch, the father and his son. The council of peace shall be between the father and the son. And the covenant of peace is what he's offering to us. Um, so when you look at the branch as Yahuwah's branch, Yahuwah's son, then you will see that he is going to build the temple based off of the covenant that was between them both, him and his father. The covenant trinkles to, to Israel from the son, from Yahusha. It has always been this way. So look at this, verse 14 and 15. Now here's what incorporates us. The crown shall be to Helam and to Tob Tobilja, so Tobilja and to Jedidiah and to Hen and to the son of Zephaniah for a memorial, a sign in the temple of Yahuwah. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of Yahuwah. And you shall know Yahuwah of hosts have sent me to you. And shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim. So we have the building of the temple. Acts chapter 15 fulfills that when Yahushua went to his father and started uh, allowing the Ruach to put together his people out of uh, the remnant, basically, those who <coughs> was left in obedience to Yahuwah. That Acts chapter 15 says that this was a fulfillment of the book of Amos, which was talking about the building of the tabernacle, and that when the Ruach not only went on the Yahudim, but went on the Gentiles, on the nations, that this was a fulfillment or completion of the building of a temple. But then look what it says here. It says Yahushua will build the temple, or, or the branch will build the temple. And then it says that those who are, verse 15, those who are far off shall come and build in the temple. This is when you see in the book of Peter, it says that we are stones and that we are the builders and that the, those who were supposed to be builders rejected the cornerstone. The book of Isaiah says that the builders rejected the stone. So if those builders reject the stone, we ought not to reject the stone. And when we receive the stone, we then start to build in the temple and we bring more stones into the temple to build the temple. So we see Zechariah cannot be talking about some guy, um, very important people. I'm not, you see, I'm not, I don't want to belittle their position, like some, a, a priest from the son of Joshua, even though it mentions the son of Joshua, you don't, you don't hear about the son of Joshua in the book of Nehemiah. Why would Nehemiah have to come and start running everything if there was already a king on the throne after, the, after they left Persia? You see, so after they left Persia, you have Joshua, we have uh, Yahusadek, and then you have all their children of the priests with Ezra and with Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the governor. He was the one uh, kind of <coughs> leading out and helping everyone organize to get everything done. You know, so this branch that's supposed to come to build the temple is not a Levite, it's, it's Yahushua. And the temple that he's building is for Yahuwah, the Ruach to dwell in, not for burnt offerings, as Solomon said. Solomon clearly said in the book of Chronicles, he said, this building, what is this building except for burnt offerings and to give offerings and sacrifices. 
He says, if the heavens and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you, how much less can this building hold your glory? But we know that he puts his ruach in us to reveal his glory. And his house is the children of Israel. And the people of Israel is the house of Yah, which he pours his glory in. And scripture says that he will glorify the house of my glory in Isaiah 60, verse 7. You know, so he will glorify the house of his glory. He will esteem the house of his esteem. We are that house, not a building that they're going to build again. They're not going to build it again. The branch is already building his, that temple right now. And those who are far off are building in the temple right now. So as Yah's people come, his, his, his Ruach is filling those people. And then the, you know, the, the glory or the esteem from that temple is being seen in this world. And that's what Hezekiah was supposed to show them, the temple. But guess what? Yahushua is going to show the world his temple because his people is going to be his temple and reveal that glory to the world. You know, so I just wanted to kind of solidify that point. Yeah, no, nah, brother, I, you know, you and you reminded me of something when you said that, because, you know, when the people of Yah failed to do what um, what he asked them to do, what he wants them to do, he has to do it another way. So so check this out in Isaiah seven. And we read through this passage and I and I handed to it, but I didn't really go deep into it because I didn't want to pull away from what happens in verse 14. But in verse three, he says, then Yahuwah said to Isaiah, go out now and meet Ahaz, king of the tribe of Judah, right? And you and Sherah Jasset, you and a remnant shall return, go meet the king of Judah at the aqueduct, at the upper pool on the highway, the fullest field where, where there is a, this is a place of cleansing. Now, you talk about repetitive uh, 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 um, actions that happen and how they repeat themselves. You know, kingdoms fall, kingdoms rise. You see it happen over and over again. This is a direct connection to Judah, who was supposed to be the light for everybody to see and hear the king of Judah, a wicked king, not doing what he was supposed to be doing. He's going to make a treaty with another nation to attack his brothers, right? Or to stop his brothers from attack. The other part of that is it's a direct, clear picture of the Messiah cleansing the one who was dirty, right? What did Messiah say he was coming for? The lost sheep, the lost tribes of Israel, Ephraim, Manasseh, the rest of the northern tribes are the lost. And he comes for them. And he's telling Ahaz at this moment, he's showing them, not only are you the wrong type of cat, not only are you in, in sin, you're not doing what Judah is supposed to do. Um, and we see that happen with Judah and Joseph when he came back and repented from what he had done and was restored. So just wanted to kind of show that too. Um, we didn't really get into that, but that's another part that I want to examine more to give a, to a clearer picture of that. So um, I'm going to let June go and then you, Jayo. Uh, my comment is that um, is off topic, so I don't know if he was responding to you. Oh. Might be. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. <laughs> okay, I'll be fast. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate today's message. I thought it was really timely uh, um, to, to, you know, have a, a fresh reminder on how to study the word. And like Sister Diane said, you know, the purpose is to get to know Yah better. Um, when we, and we, and we want to hide his word in our heart that we don't sin against him. But to do that, we have to accurately understand what it's saying, right? When we study. And I just wanted to echo what the elders or our elders said in the, the morning message that it's, it's okay to have questions. And, 
you know, we all have, we all have them and, and it's okay to ask questions and the very format that we have, um, I believe encourages questions if you have them, you know, the way we have a message and then there's an open forum. Um, but our elders are also approachable if you just want to get with any of them one-on-one or schedule a meeting with all, you know, all of them or, you know, there's the Q&A as has been mentioned a few times just for assembly questions on Friday. And you can show up with your question and ask it. You can give it through the website. Um, there's all kinds of, um, uh, you know, send an email. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to um, quickly give three scriptures, and the first one is found in Romans 12, 6 through 7. Uh, bear me one second. So it's kind of like a scripture party, but a little different uh, topic. <laughs> uh, so Romans 12. Uh, six through seven, it says, uh, now having different gifts according to the favor which was given us, let us use them accordingly. If prophecy uh, according to the proportion of belief, if serving in the serving, or he who is teaching in the teaching. And so I just wanted to share that it, it is a spiritual gift uh, to um, that, that some people have the gift of teaching. And so it's okay to be taught and to, you know, uh, ask questions of, of teachers. Um, but we also have a responsibility after hearing teachings, you know, even the teachings we're hearing from our elders or, or anyone, you know, we're, we're still to be like the Bereans. So I wanted to read Acts 17, 10 through 11. Uh, and, and the brothers immediately sent Shaul and Silas away by night to Beroia, who having come went into the congregation of the Yahudim. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonia who received the word with great eagerness, eagerness and searched the scriptures daily if these words were so. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, they, they listen to teachers or they listen to the word being taught, but then they, you know, made sure that they, you know, they studied to show themselves approved that they went to check and make sure those things are so. So it's okay to, to hear things, but we have to be, you know, mature believers to, you know, if we do that, to chew the meat <laughs> and spit the bones and just, you know, make sure that we see it in scripture, you know, just don't take someone else's word for it. You know, someone says, ABC, make sure we can see that too and bear witness with it ourselves in scripture. And if not, ask a question about that. And those questions are welcome. And the very last scripture I'll read um, is in Hebrews 10, verse 25. Um, you know, I, you know, I just wanted to say, don't, don't be on an island either. You know, if you have questions, if you're struggling with doctrinal thoughts, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, blah, blah, which I thought I had up. Um, it says, um, and, and it's really powerful when you read this one scripture in like the context of the whole chapter, but I'm just going to read the one scripture. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse 25 says, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So it's even more, you know, you know, as we see, you know, if they thought the day was approaching back then, <laughs> it's really approaching now, you know. So, you know, 
um because iron sharpens iron and we get to study the work collaboratively you know as as it's been brought out that you know uh we we learn from one another in the insights but still we have that and it's okay to learn that way but we still have to you know study the word for ourselves and and be those bereans and that would be all oh, that was a little longer for me but Great job. No, great, great exhortations and, and great reminders um, to all of us. Um, we absolutely are here. You know, there is no reason for anyone and, and under the sound of my voice um, to to go off on a tangent um, when we are available um, to help you. And and like the brothers and I both know, or, or the brothers and I know, you know, it, it's 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 regener reju rejuvenating for us as well because it causes us to look at some things sometimes that we weren't necessarily looking at, you know, um, and we have the ability to be able to give an answer for those things. So praise Yah, praise Yah. Um, Brother Jadio. So uh, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of confirm what Brother Danny was saying and what Sister June is saying. Um, <clears throat> it is because of the question that we decided to go depth into depth into this this particular answer and in doing that we learned individually learned so much more for our own personal uh relationship and understanding and, and walk with yeah um and I, I think i think you guys heard me say this multiple times during the q a that your questions are just as important as the answers because um those of us who who I know if, for a fact, Brother Rick and Brother Rod and, and myself, we're not, we don't trust ourselves in leading everybody. <laughs> we trust that Yah will give us the understanding how to give an answer to those who need it and when they need it as well. You know, so this is just what I believe that just looking at this, this is not a coincidence. I, this is not something that just came about. This is something that I've been practicing on my own, and I can imagine uh, Brother Rick and Brother Rod, this is things that they practice on their own. This is not a characteristic that just appeared there when we got together. Is Yah put us together because our minds are kind of united in that way. It's been three years, and our minds have been consistently united as far as the need that the people have, what we need to give, and how we need to give it has always been in complete dependence on his word, on his Ruach, on him being with us. And that if he's not with us, then we could just end this right now. We could just forget about this whole Zoom assembly. But he showed time and time again in the, in the course of three years that he has been with us step by step. And, um, and I praise Yah that he has allowed us to have the, the mindset to desire what he says instead of desire to tell people what we think. We do not, that to me, I, I get annoyed when I, when I speak too long myself. I get annoyed at myself. And I think a lot of you have seen me, if I'm trying to explain something too long and I'm like, let me just open the, the scripture because it's like, sometimes it's like, I don't like when it's too much of my words and it's not, Yahuwah's words in there. <laughs> so um, I think Yah is definitely moving and, and everyone who's here, which brings us to Danny's point, everyone who's here is, is having the same desire that we have as well. When we first started it, you know, when we first started, it was, it was going to be just us. And we're starting to see that everyone's desire is the same thing, that they desire what Yah wants. They desire what Yah sees and what he understands, and they submit to what the scripture says. And I wanted to point out uh, uh, an amazing verse that I want all of us to remember uh, in, in brother, in, as to what Brother Danny said about um, because Yah sees us. Now, listen to this verse. This is amazing. Um, I just remembered it when Danny, when Brother Danny said it. So Malachi chapter 3, Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. <clears throat> and I think that this is very important for us to even put to memory to remember for, for comfort as well. So check this out. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. 
It says, then they that feared Yahuwah spake often one to another, and Yahuwah hearkened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahuwah and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith Yahuwah of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then shall you return and discern between righteous and the wicked, between him that serves Elohim and him that serves him not. So is, verse 16 is, those who fear Yahuwah spoke often to one another, and Yahuwah heard us. He hears us when we're studying together. He hears us when we're trying to figure out these things together. And he has a book of remembrance, and he will, <laughs> he will call us his. He will bring us into his sonship and he will treat us as sons and daughters, you know, and he will give us understanding between righteousness and wickedness, you know, so um, this is very important for us to continuously communicate with one another, our questions, our thoughts, even if we believe we have answers to communicate that with one another, because it may be a piece of the puzzle that another person is missing. You know, so I, I would just encourage everybody, as Brother Danny said, to continue to just engage with one another in, in our beliefs so that way Yahuwah can hear us and answer us, you know. So praise Yah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Let us not forsake the assembly of the saints. I believe that wholeheartedly, um, and I agree, and Rick agrees with what Yadio said about, you know, our, our time together. You know, um, th there was definitely something unique about the three of us um, that was different from, you know, any anyone else. Um, and I knew that the two brothers that I served with um, and now our first deacon, JP, all had a heart for Yah, all had a desire and a thirst and hunger to do his will um, and, and learn together. Like as much as we, um, study together, um, the more we understand, you know, our, 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 our understandings change. We find new things in scripture that we never saw before constantly. Um, and we, we, we do our very best um, to, to, to be on one accord. And, and, and when we're not, we seek reasons as to why, okay, why aren't we in, in agreement with this? Let's talk about those things, you know. So we don't leave anything, we don't brush anything under the rug. And I think we're we're compassionate with each other. We can be, you know, we, we gotta be stern sometimes, but we're still loving in our sternness towards each other. Um, but that that happens. I don't want you to think that we're perfect, three perfect men. Nah. We're three men um that come from mud, you know, that that Yahuwah has washed off. Um, and, and, and we're servants to you, um, and, and we always want to be, you know, that way to you. Um, we don't want to be, you know, haughty, high-minded on a pedestal. And please don't put us on a pedestal because I don't I want what comes from that thought. Like, we want to be right where y'all wants us to be. So I love these guys, and I love you all as well. Praise y'all. Brother Kevin. Like clockwork. Um, first of all, oh, Yahuwah, ah, man, I pray for a good message that it's touching me in my walk, in my daily, daily, and not once has he forsaken that prayer, and every week I get exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, when Jadiel mentioned three years, I said, well, you know, that was about, uh, I've been coming around about two years, two and a half. And just like clockwork, I'll have a question. And just before I get it out, he'll answer it. That's been since the door, he's been like that. The message, Elder Rick, Elder Rod, man, you, 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 you hit the nail on the head today. Um, if you want to know further, talk to the deacon. He knows I can't say my plight, but what I've been dealing with as far as others. And man, that, that hit it on the point. I mean, today, as Sister Diane put it, 
beautiful meal. I'm full. I think the only thing that's missing is Sister Poppy's uh, uh, test uh, uh, witness. And that's about it. It's been beautiful. Praise Yahua. Thank you, Mishpaka. Hallelujah. Praise Yah, Brother Kevin. Sister Poppy, do you want to um, uh, indulge the brother with the testimony? <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> but um, nah, I mean, this is this is definitely a beautiful day. Uh, oh, there she is, Sister Poppy. The floor is yours. I was just enjoying the discussion and the teaching so much. I was going to wait till the recording was over. Um, but I do have a testimony that I wanted to give. Um, this week has been a rough one. Um, a lot due to the pagan stuff going on. And my daughter and son-in-law were working really long hours. And um, we ended up with my grandbabies a lot longer into the night and then I think it was Wednesday night my daughter had to open her clinic and so we decided me hesitantly I did not want to because I was exhausted to have them have a sleepover at grandma's house and we've been potty training the little one and oh he's rambunctious very rambunctious and uh, so he's had free range of the house just because he has to access the bathroom and I have to keep the baby gate open. So I'm worn out. And um, by the time it's bedtime, he's even more amped than before because he knows it's sleep overnight. And he's excited and running around the house and we finally, okay, this is it, 10 o'clock at night. And we get up at four around here. So 10 o'clock at night, we're trying to get him to settle down and he's just jumping on the bed and you know, steamrolling his sister and kicking her and just cracking up. Next thing I know, his sleeper's off. Next thing I know, he's running into the front room where my husband is screaming with his arms straight up and somewhere along the way, he lost his diaper, took it off. I don't know what happened. So he's running up to my husband, just screaming and butt naked. And my husband's like, okay, I'll just, you know, you get him dressed and I'll take him for a drive. So he takes him for a drive, get everybody to sleep, wake up in the morning. I've got these three little ones in my bed. And the first thing we do is say prayer. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Before we even got out of bed, it, it just, it melted my heart because normally we wait until after breakfast when they get here, but we got to wake up in the morning and say prayer. And I loved it. I loved it. It, it was, it was, it made my heart feel so good. And Praise y'all for that, because that was neat. Praise y'all, sis. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, <clears throat> you know, the effective, fervent prayer, the righteous avail of much. And we see that, you know, in live and in color, you know, if we're willing to do that. So praise y'all for that. And uh, thank you for sharing. Um, and, and I'm speaking on behalf of not just us, but Brother Kevin as well. Praise y'all. Um, <clears throat> man, this was, uh, we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to do a separate, um, so it's, there's gonna be the message and then there's gonna be a separate discussion of this one because it's, it's extra long, but I've enjoyed uh, uh, being with you guys today. Anyone else before we close out? No. All right. Well, this has been a beautiful, beautiful day. And um, <clears throat> remember, we have, oh, somebody's hand is up. Oh, I apologize. Oh, oh no, go ahead. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Um, I just wanted to say this was beautiful, beautiful message today. Um, I really appreciate everything. I'm just soaking everything in because there was so much information shared, but it was just what I needed. And it really put me in a spiritual mindset for this Shabbat. 
And I just want to continue to praise Abba Yahuwah because I see how he blesses his people when they put him first and seek knowledge. So thank all of you brothers, all the elders and everyone on the line and who listens in for, for just choosing Yahuwah and being a part of his family, being his child. Um, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yah. Thank you, sis. All right. <clears throat> Um, this definitely, uh, again, was a, was a beautiful day. Just, and I think all of us needed it. You know, you know, Jadiel said it very plain and clear about this epic of time. Like we're in the winter solstice, like we're in an evil, you know, people don't look at it as evil, but this is an evil time and we're set apart from that, you know, and I think, you know, the way that we come together specifically today was um, edifying. Um, it, it's rejuvenating, energizing. Um, but don't forget, we have work to do. You know, we still have to do work for the kingdom. Um, we can't just, you know, feel like this when when it's when it's fresh. We have to take this same mindset and know that Yah will carry us through any situation um with this same power that, that we're experiencing right now so praise ya and um as we end the recording i'll say shabbat shalom shalom akuti and rohim thank you so much for viewing this video we hope it was helpful to your walk in the truth remember to always search the scriptures on your own to study abba's word and show yourself approved according to 2 Timothy 2.15. We invite you to study with us. To join us in a live study, just go to our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com and click the Join Us tab. We have something available Wednesday through Saturday of every week. If you've been Baruch or blessed by this video today or any other study, we encourage you to go to the Giving tab on our website. Our elders all have their own ways of income, so none of the giving or proceeds go to them. Instead, it goes to biblical assembly needs. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any new videos. We sincerely pray that Abba continues to direct your path as you acknowledge Him in all your ways. Much avaha and again shalom.